monoclonal antibodies and their use in diagnosing diseases. Uh, diseases such as HIV, chlamydia, which I'll be showing you about now, and, mal and malaria. This is for the WJEC GCC Biology, section 3.2 in Human Health and Disease, uh, specification part F. In there, you're expected to know how monoclonal antibodies are used for diagnosing diseases uh, and monitoring the spread of malaria. By now, you should have already looked at how monoclonal antibodies are actually produced. I will not be going into that in this particular video. So, in a situation where you've got a population and we want to assess who has a particular disease, such as, for example, here, who actually has chlamydia. What that's going to involve is uh, the use of monoclonal antibodies in a test which is known as an immunoassay. An immunoassay. It involves, you could actually do it using the, the kind of stick you use for pregnancy, but if you're testing a lot of people, you might use one of these. These are known as an ELISA plate or micro teeter plate. Um, you don't need to remember for WJEC, uh, the ELISA plate is used. Just know that the test is called an immunoassay. And you can see here, you've got lots of little wells on this particular ELISA plate. And you could take a sample, a body fluid sample from each person um, and use one well per person to test to see if they have a particular disease. So let's look to see how that is done. Let's just take these bottom 10 wells on the right to represent the 10 people who we'd like to test as in the picture. And the blue squares now are representing those individual wells. What a scientist would do is that they would coat the inner surface of each of those wells with antigens to a particular disease they wish to test for, in this case, chlamydia. So they've got antigens that they have prepared and they stick them in to those wells. Then you need to collect some body fluids from the people that you wish to test. In this particular case, it would be easy and appropriate to take some blood samples. So blood samples would be taken and then we would put some of that blood into each of those plastic wells. Now, if a person has been exposed to the particular pathogen, e.g. the chlamydia pathogen, they would have had an immune response to it, whether it's effective or not. But as part of the immune response, their lymphocytes would have produced antibodies that are specific to that antigen or that disease, in this case, chlamydia. If they have not been exposed to the disease, they would not be producing these antibodies, so we would not expect to see them in the blood. Now, any antibodies that are in these wells will stick or bind to the antigens. And then we would remove the blood from those particular wells. Now, you can't see anything at this stage. You can't see the antigens, and neither can you see the uh, antibodies that would have stuck to these antigens. So we can't actually tell if anybody has the disease chlamydia just yet. This is where we bring in monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies, or a solution of monoclonal antibodies, raised against chlamydia antibodies are inserted into each of these wells. Now, what has happened to these monoclonal antibodies in their production is that they have been modified slightly. They may well have an, an enzyme attached to them or a dye or a fluorescent tag or even a radioactive tag, all of which can be detected later on. Now, these monoclonal antibodies that are specific only to chlamydia antibodies will bind to any chlamydia antibodies that are there. If there are no chlamydia antibodies, these monoclonal antibodies will not stick to anything. They won't bind to the antigens. The next procedure is to wash any unbound monoclonal antibody away.
this is now the stage where you can see if somebody has the disease because these fluorescent tags would be fluorescing or if they were to die you'd see a color reaction going inside the actual particular well would now be able to identify who has a disease in this case chlamydia so if you were to look at the ELISA plate as part of the immunoassay you would see two of the wells in this particular case fluorescing and then those people who have the disease can be told that they have disease and need treatment and those who are negative can be told the good news Just as a side note, you should also be aware that the level of fluorescence, how bright it is, or the depth of colour if it's a particular dye, will actually give the scientist an indication of the level of infection somebody has. And you can see here, this is uh, an ELISA plate uh, using a red coloured dye. Those which are darkest red indicate that the level of disease or infection is highest. Those which are quite pale means uh, low infection rate. And those which are very, very, very pale pink uh, would be negative so they wouldn't have the disease so it's a very useful uh, diagnostic tool not only to tell if somebody actually has a disease but actually how severely infected they actually are now I mentioned that uh, we can use it for other diseases you should also be aware that the same procedure is used for HIV the only difference between this and chlamydia is that the monoclonal antibodies would be specific to any HIV antibodies that an infected person would have in their body fluids. There is another use for monoclonal antibodies that you need to be aware of, and that is for the test of malaria. Um, it's very useful out in the field, particularly in poor countries, to provide instant feedback uh, to whether somebody actually has malaria or not or if they've been cured or treated mal with malaria for malaria and you can use ELISA plates if you're testing lots of people but you can also use something like you might have seen with the pregnancy test where you get a separate plastic stick um, some body fluids are taken um, they're placed onto the stick you can see the little well on the left hand side there and if you get a color change two two bars color change as you can see in the picture uh, would indicate positive. The top one um, means it's a control to make sure the test is working. The uh, second one down, it means that's a positive result for malaria. So it's very rapid and very useful in the field uh, to be able to test people and get instant results. So how is that useful in the uh, treatment of malaria? Well, it enables us to quickly identify um, how effective anti-malarial drugs are so we can see if uh, the malaria, level of malaria antibodies in the blood are going down. In other words, the drug has actually proven successful. And we can also see uh, or monitor the spread of malaria. And that's how scientists are able to produce maps like the one you see now, where we can see countries that haven't got any malaria at all. We can see countries where malaria is on a decrease, the pale pink ones. And then we can see countries where malaria is a problem and attempts are ongoing to try and reduce the malaria pathogen and rate of transmission. So monoclonal antibodies, extremely useful in the diagnosis and monitoring of diseases.